In this video, we'll learn about some basic HTML elements and practice using them in our WordPress theme. To follow along with this tutorial, you'll need a WordPress website with the CodeCamp starter theme installed. For more information about HTML or the CodeCamp starter theme, visit theredsunflower.com and click on CodeCamp. To start taking a look at our code, the first thing we're going to do is navigate to the WordPress dashboard by adding slash WP dash admin to your domain name in the address bar. Log in using your username and password and click on theme editor. When using the theme editor, it's important to make sure that you're editing the correct theme and that you're working in the right file. You can find that information at the top of the screen. The first thing we're going to change is our site name. In the Code Camp Starter theme, you'll find the site name in the pink section at the top of the website. This is called our header. To change this part of the website, we'll want to navigate to the header.php file. The header.php file controls the top of the web page. Once we're inside the file, you want to find the site name, which is CodeCamp. It should be around line 28, wrapped inside a div called site name. We're going to select the text in between the H1 tags and delete it. Then we're going to add something new. Hit update file, then navigate back to your website in a new tab, and you'll see the change that we made. Let's try changing it to something else. Remember you want to select all the text in between the angle brackets of the H1 tags. Hit update file. Return back to your web page, hit refresh, and you should see the changes we made. We use H1 when we want to make our text really big, like the headline of a newspaper. We usually use the H1 tag for page titles. For more examples of H1 tags, visit theredsunflower.com. The next thing we're going to work on are our P tags. P tags are for paragraph text. We use P tags for the main page text. Your paragraph should always be wrapped in P tags. This means you'll have angle bracket P angle bracket at the beginning of your text and angle bracket slash P angle bracket at the end of your text. Let's add paragraph text to our website. To do this, we're going to work in a different section of the web page called the footer. The footer controls the bottom of our web page. In this example, it's the purple part of the website. To make changes to this part of the website, we're going to move to the footer.php file and find the p tags around line 14. Go ahead and select out all the text in between the opening and closing P tags and add your own text. Hit update file and return to your website and refresh the page. You should see your changes at the bottom of the website. Now let's look at the difference between H1 tags and P tags. Our H1 text is bigger and bolder than the paragraph text at the bottom of the page. When you're choosing which tags to wrap your text in, consider how you want the text to be displayed on the web page. For more practice with H1 tags and P tags, we're going to go to the index.php file. 
The index.php file controls the body of the web page. In this case, it's the light blue section of the web page and everything in it. Once we navigate to that file, we can see that we have several divs, h1 tags, and p tags. We're going to be working within section 1. The first thing we're going to change is the section name from section 1 to something else. Update file, return back to your website, and refresh the page. The next thing we're going to do is change the paragraph text. We're going to delete out this filler text, the lorem ipsum that you can see there, that kind of gibberish text. We're going to delete that out and add something different. Hit update file, return back to your website, and refresh the page. And you'll see that the paragraph text is updated. The next thing we're going to take a look at are IMG tags. IMG tags are used for images. IMG tags are different than H1 and P tags. What's important about IMG tags is the SRC attribute. The SRC attribute tells us the source of the image that we'd like to display on the page. That source is the URL for that image. To find the URL of the image you'd like to use, within the WordPress dashboard, navigate to the media section and select add new. Upload the file that you'd like to use, then click edit. You'll find the file URL on the right hand side of the page. Copy and paste that URL back into your code. within the two quotation marks after the source attribute. Hit update file and refresh the page and you should see your photo update. A tags are for links. Links take you to other web pages when you click on them. The most important part of an A tag is the href attribute. That tells the computer where to go when a link is clicked. Now, A tags have a structure that is somewhat similar to H1 and P tags, meaning if you change the text in between the opening and closing tags, it changes the text that's displayed on the web page. So here we're going to change the link text. But you see, even though we change the link text, the link doesn't go anywhere at this point when you click on it. To make the link go somewhere, we'll have to return to our code and add a URL to this href attribute. You can get the URL from navigating to the web page you'd like to use and copying and pasting the URL in the address bar into the quotation marks after the href attribute. Once you do this and update your file, your link should now navigate to the page that you selected.
For more practice with HTML, try customizing the other sections of the web page. If things aren't looking the way you expect, double check the documentation at theredsunflower.com. You wanna make sure that you're not missing any angle brackets, quotations, or special characters. If you have questions about your code, try leaving a comment on theredsunflower.com. I hope this has been a helpful introduction to HTML. In our next video, we'll be going over CSS and how we can make further changes to our website.